welcome back to my unepic walkthrough. My name is Chris, and uh, it's been been a while since I last did a video, and uh, there's a, quite a few reasons for this actually. And I hope you've not been too impatient. And welcome back again. So I knew that I had to do something. I had to respect my character because after beating the neuron boss, I can get access to the catacombs. And inside the catacombs, uh, there's a particular guy who'll give me a reset skill orb. The only one in the game that you'll ever get. And since I first started this walkthrough, I was relying on potions and my bow and uh, axes. Pretty much the standard setup for a warrior type class. And I hadn't even thought to explore all these tombs. I didn't even know what they were, to be honest with you. I'd gotten through to the last stage of the game and. I didn't even bother to spec into it. So I spent my time doing a lot of research and uh, I knew I had to do that so I, I was kind of putting it off for that. Um, I do work full time so uh, there's like three or four different things I want to talk about. It's quite difficult to get them in order but because I'm working full time I have to set aside some time for my own game time. Uh, time for me to play games and have fun uh, and also set aside time to make this walkthrough for you and I appreciate the feedback that I get on these videos it's, uh, it's a good motivator and personally I, I want to finish this game with these these new talents um, and as you'll see later on in the video I'm going to respect my character so with, with these new abilities I'm going to actually be playing the game like a fresh character again and uh, I'm looking forward to doing that. So what else is there really? Oh yeah here um, I, was, I should have used a potion of speed but it doesn't really matter because I've got so much health it doesn't even matter. Uh, <laughs> so I'd advise you to drink that before you even walk through the gate and just run 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 run. Uh, so yes, um, also there's a, as you may have noticed, I'm not doing live commentary anymore and this is kind of something new I want to try and it's also something that, here I'll, I'll try and explain it, um, when I'm playing a game while doing live commentary the experience is completely different and I don't have as much, as much fun doing live commentary because I have to concentrate on talking to you and what I'm making for the video and the content that's going into the video and not concentrating on having fun and playing the game, which is what I play games for. I mean, I'm a gamer, I enjoy playing games and I started uploading videos to this, ch um, to this channel out of my love of games. So to deny myself of that, I thought well, I had to change something and I think this might work doing commentary after the fact because I can just play through the game. As you can see the first shortcut in the catacombs right there. Um, so I think this is going to be good when I get used to it so I, I apologise if there's a, a few problems with editing or it's just not up to the same usual standards because I like to put out videos of a, a higher standard than uh, you might expect. Um, just because it's my own personal choice, I don't like putting out substandard work. And I suppose that brings me on to my next topic. And I don't really want to talk about Terraria too much because I'm worried that no one is going to be into on Epic, um, and the people that want Terraria aren't even going to click on this video. So I might not even be talking to you. But the tutorial. Uh, Terraria tutorials that I was planning to do, they're going to take a lot of work. And sure, the, the commentary is going to be uh, after the fact, not live commentary. But the amount of work that I have to put in to make a tutorial is like a day's work. And that means I have to sacrifice a day of my weekend to do actual work. Making a tutorial is, well, it's entertaining, it's something to do, but it's not fun in the same sense that you get from playing a game um, and that's why I've been playing a lot of Kingdoms of Amalur actually, it's great fun I have loads and loads of footage no live commentary so I'll be putting out some of these videos just to let you know uh, 
if you're interested, that'll be coming up on the channel, maybe even today. Maybe when you view this video, it'll be out. So keep an eye out for those if you're interested. I will be doing commentary. Um, so here I, I'm completely ignoring the video at this point. So this guy here, as you might have read already, will give you the skill reset up. You go and get him some blue essence, and I just bought some arcane essence because I didn't want to muck around killing skeletons. And uh, use my scroll of a turn to get right back into there and use the skill up. Now I suppose I should talk about that a bit more. Um, like I said earlier, I was mostly using a, a melee uh, based archer type character and not using hardly any magic except for healing. And also, as I mentioned earlier, the, I would be researching my build and figuring out what I want to do. So what I did was, I travelled around the entire world on my main character, on, on my uh, the first character I ever played, and I made a full inventory of the shops. I've even put it onto the Unepic forums. And what that allowed me to do was really finely tune the, the build I wanted. And I came up with a few, uh, some involving less fire attributes and more arcane and some light. And after doing even more research on um, what these particular abilities did, I decided to scrap um, light. I decided to scrap mental, which I was going to get for the uh, the sea invisible. And uh, the cast speed buff that's in there. And I eventually settled on grabbing fire, healing, um, arcane, and full alteration. So I'm going to get like 14 levels in alteration, which is one shy of the maximum level, because you can get a um, tomb of polymorph, which is level 15. And this is like a full build, spec'd up to level 17, which is where I'll take this character in the end. And here I am scrapping my bow, I'm not going to use that anymore, because I had to grab those points from somewhere. If I were to spec fully into bows and keep it up to scratch and, and keep the damage high, uh, I would have had to spend 16 of my skill points. And that means I can't spec anything into alteration, I would have had to sacrifice a few in, maybe arcane or fire, and I really didn't want to do that, to be honest with you. And I eventually decided, I did spend four hours on this, uh, I think it's about four and a half, five hours on um, the shop inventory. And then I spent another hour or two on creating like a tomb list inside the same spreadsheet. So after those six hours, I uh, started recording again. I'm just going to briefly run through this because... I don't want to spend too much time respecting my character while I'm recording. It's kind of boring, I know. Uh, so when I need uh, to do a particular something, I'll just put a skill in there, and I'm going to sort it out at the end of this video. And then I'll continue with uh, questing the bosses, just as usual. But I'll be using more uh, spells instead of using my bow. And there'll be teething problems. I, I've not done it before, so I've got to learn. And. Um, here I am buying some fire spells. First ones are in the sewers, and I don't want to be proven wrong here, so I'll wait until I teleport. Um, I think the next ones are in the gardens. So if you just follow this path, you'll find out where they are, and not too expensive really. About 800 gold, maybe 1,000 in total, so it doesn't set me back too far. It's a bit of a shame that I spec so much into potions early game. Because if I hadn't done that, then I would have had like a skill reset for f uh, uh, available for anything else later I wanted to try. Uh, or if someone suggested a really good build, I could have tried that. I'm interested. Um, if you're still here by now, I very much appreciate that like, you may just want to see how the game's done as a walkthrough. But from a personal standpoint, I'm trying something new here, so if you can provide feedback, if you, you've got anything bad to say, anything good to say about this this format, where I'm not doing live commentary, um, even like respecting my build, or if you've got some suggestions, I'd really love to hear about it. And I don't think there was anything else left to say in that sentence, but I said, and anyway, oh well. <laughs> cool. And these spells are pretty awesome. Um, 
as you'll no, I think I actually cut it out, didn't I? Damn. But I suppose I'll be saving those spells if you've not seen them before uh, until I actually get back into the playthrough. But the, uh, the fire breath is, is pretty badass. I've been using that quite a bit. And uh, if the enemies are at range, you can toss like a bomb at them and it explodes in, in, in AoE. Uh, it's really cool. Um, and I'm right up to the point where I just did. I just beat the. Uh, the Catacombs boss, yes I did. And I just went to the shop and got some arcane abilities. So I'm eager to try those out. There we go, well, this episode is nearly done. And I keep calling them episodes when they're just parts. To me they're parts. Unless of course there is one more thing. Yes, my, my, my past self is going to prove me wrong here. Yeah, so where do I need to go? To the shop, of course. Because there's some new abilities that have just popped into the shop over there. If you go over to the Unepic forums and you're interested in this shop inventory and uh, the tomb catalogue that I created, I've even created a, a, like a image guide so you can see where each shortcut goes and I've labelled all the shops and linked them to the, uh, the Google spreadsheet. I did read some uh, comments, well not on my video, it's like on, a, on the forums about uh, wearing armour and how easy it makes the game. I did consider changing to robes but I'm pretty happy with having armour because when skeletons hit me they do like one damage. And I'm pretty happy with that to be honest with you. So I'm going to stick with that, I keep on upgrading my axe where I can. and. Oh, well, that's actually a good point. Um, imbue fire only works on swords and bows, <laughs> so I did have it in my my uh, my plans, but then I decided to ditch bows afterwards. Just not a massive issue. Having a spell and not being able to use it isn't a huge problem. Um, and the reason I decided to spec into alteration was a few reasons. Um, there's one main, not main reason, uh, and there's some nice like side re uh, reasons for specking into alteration because there's uh, an, the three abilities that allow you to um, transform. I, I can't remember the name for it actually. Uh, you turn your sapphires, rubies, and emeralds into coins when you're on the go, so you can instantly sell those, and I'm pretty sure they sell for more than you get from the shop. And there are two r other really good things, you can improve your weapon and improve your armour just by using a simple spell. There's also the, the portal spell, which allows you to create a portal and teleport to it. Cool, huh? So thanks for watching, and uh, catch you next time.